So one of the strangest Android launchers I know of on the market recently received an update which actually makes it compatible with Surface Duo and Surface Duo 2. We're talking about AIO Launcher. I assume I'm supposed to read that as letters. IO Launcher, maybe, would be the way to say it. I have no idea. This isn't going to be another Niagara Launcher fiasco uh, for those people that might have watched that rather embarrassing video. This launcher is really, really strange though. It doesn't look like any other launcher I've ever looked at. So what I'm gonna do, what I've already done, is I'm going to install this thing on my Surface Duo and then I'm gonna kind of look at it and tell you guys what I think. We're gonna run through some settings and just see how well it works. Okay, so we are up and running. I have set it as my default launcher and as you can see here, it is taking advantage of both screens. I guess one thing I need to do here is I need to show it to you in real like first person perspective here so that you can kind of appreciate what it actually looks like with the hinge in between. Now if I go ahead and I put it in phone mode, it switches to the single screen sort of AIO launcher setup and then when I come out of phone mode, it pretty quickly snaps into this other layout. We have your main layout here and then your just list of apps over here on the other side. Now one problem that I immediately came across was this. Let's launch, let's just launch the web browser over here. You see it's gonna launch on this side. Now let's go over here and let's launch the Google Play Store. See it launched it over here on top of this. That's a little bit annoying. Let's put it over here and get rid of it. Now let's launch the Play Store again, and now it's over here. So what's happening here is it is effectively launching apps where they were last, as opposed to launching them on whatever screen you launch the app on. So that's a pretty big problem for me, honestly. Probably, probably a deal breaker for me, if I'm being honest. I know that's a small thing for some people, for me, that's really big. But let's look here at this left screen and let's see what we have here. So we have our time and date up here. Do we, do we get, a, yep, we sure do. We jump to our clock app if you click it. That's cool. What about calendar app for that? You absolutely do. That is all very cool. Uh, weather over here and it shows, oh, okay, its own little weather forecast thing. That's interesting. There's a monitor, storage and battery life all right there. Pretty cool, you have a timer up here. If you set a lot of timers, I guess that's good to have that there. If I start a timer, how does that work? It's in the app. That is interesting. Okay, frequent apps. This seems to be kind of random right now because obviously I'm not frequently launching Niagara Launcher. So I assume though, as I launch apps, like let's launch Backdrops, well now Backdrops is, has jumped up on that list. So it's gonna kind of sort itself over time. Uh, over here, you get your dialer. So if you click this, that launches the phone app. That's neat. This launches your text messaging app, which it launched over there to the side. Uh, this seems to launch my contacts and then you can expand it and actually dial in the actual launcher. Click it again and it goes small. Mailbox. So this actually can be hooked up to your email. So whatever you might be using, you're going to see your emails there. Tasks. You can actually add. It's got its own to-do list inside the launcher. That's pretty neat. A news feed, which I don't know, maybe there's a way to customize this. I don't know yet, but there's a news feed. There is a Twitter feed. I'm actually logged into my Twitter account and it actually will show the tweet in a little pop-up. And if I hit open, what does that do? Should open up the tweet. That's pretty cool, actually. Calendar, uh, exchange rate, Bitcoin. These are things I'm going to hopefully be able to get rid of. There's an audio recorder that's right there as well. Let's try this. I am now talking to my audio recorder. That's how you stop it. I am now talking to my audio recorder. Fair enough. If you take a lot of audio notes, that's pretty cool. There's a control panel here, which will let you toggle through different settings, flashlight, brightness, so forth and so on. So there's a lot there, right? That's like a lot of useful stuff, but there's a lot of stuff there that I don't need and some things I would like to customize. So let's jump into the settings here. So select home screen, select the launcher selection dial. Okay, so this is just to actually set it as your launcher. Change the language, search button on the right. Don't see what that's changing, whatever, we'll leave it. Hide search button on scroll. So there the search button should go away. Yep, okay. 
this is interesting. There's a right hand emote that aligns everything to the right while on Duo. That's actually uh, terribly not useful. Okay, so basic settings, not a ton there. What about the UI? We can set our wallpaper, theme flat. Do you see anything changing here? I don't. Does it maybe not change until you leave settings? No? Okay, I don't see anything at all. So we're just going to leave it on flat. I don't see any theming changing. Hide widget titles. Okay, so that just gets rid of all of the titles there. And it looks like this is all stuff you need pro, the premium version, to be able to do. App settings. So this here, you can get rid of the icons if you like to have it nice and clean or want to have the icons to help find stuff easier. That's cool. So they've actually got a way to categorize different applications so that in your right hand side here, I reckon you can pull down and go to sortable and then I guess change that to categories and maybe there's some sort of, yeah, there it is. So you can, you can pull up just that category. So like there's games. Okay, that's cool. And you can customize that to your heart's content. This looks like a lot of premium stuff as well. Pull down, so that pulls up your notifications. If I swipe down, I get notifications. Strangely enough, I'm swiping down on the left screen. Notifications are popping up on the right. How does the search function work? Okay, so let's click on search and let's search scary if literal. What are we getting here? So we're gonna Google it potentially. Let's just click on search again. What does that do? It's gonna pull up a Google search. And that did some weird stuff, but okay. we repopulated i guess that's okay let's go back into the aio settings and you can change some of your settings with the search here what about if i search a contact contact show up okay that's okay there's a lot of stuff in here but we're going to scroll down here to widget settings so personally like the monitor here i've got my battery up there i don't care about my storage so let's let's can we, can we just get rid of that it's gone but we could also add in ram usage Mobile traffic must give access to phone usage statistics and then it pulls up my settings But I don't know where I go to get that. I'm sure I could find it. We're not going to worry about it right now Screen time same thing. It's not opening up the correct page to get to that. We could find it We're not going to worry about it right now. So that's cool You can add some other stuff on there battery temperature external storage does not apply But we're, we're still gonna get rid of it. It's not something that I see myself using You could have an actual weather widget if you want it there, if you want it there, that's fine. Clock, alarm, world clock, monitor, graphic. What is what is player? So does that mean if I'm playing music that it will have a widget there for that? Let's let's open up something here. Okay, we are playing music and I do not currently see anything there. Player, show widget, block apps. That does not appear to be functional. Or I'm missing something. Frequent apps. I would rather just be able to pick the apps I want. I don't really like stuff moving around. So is there is there one that I can just my apps? That's what I want. Okay. But I don't see a way to add the apps. And it does say here add widget not available in the free version. Are they meaning like to add a second my apps section? How do I actually add my apps to this? Do I do I need to come over here and actually add them? You can just drag them over. Okay, so let's let's fill this out real quick. Okay, so I've added a bunch in here. If you long press them, you can actually then like kind of rearrange them. And I guess if I wanted to have multiple different sections, so this is just my apps, but let's say that I wanted to have, you know, my messaging apps in one section by themselves, all my YouTube stuff together, I think I would actually have to pay for that. Apps list, contacts, Dialogues, timer. I don't think that the timer makes any sense for me. The dialer doesn't make any sense for me either because I don't make phone calls. What about the news feed? Can we do something about like, okay, so it is set to, it's an RSS feed. That's all this. You can set your own RSS feed, to whatever you can find. That's cool. Definitely don't need exchange rates. Definitely don't need Bitcoin. Control panel is fine. We can leave that. Audio recorder, I'm not gonna use that either. Let's get rid of that. And you can see there are several more things you can add. Well, there you go. I mean, there's a lot there. This is kind of a long video of me just kind of going through these settings, but I think that's important so you guys can kind of see what you're getting into before you actually get into it. Is this something that I think I would actually use instead of the default launcher? I don't know. It's really close, right? If apps would simply launch where I launch them, 
that would be okay. I might be able to convince myself to use this, but for now opening up Edge and it jumps over on the wrong screen, that's kind of annoying. And then another problem here is let's say I'm over here and I wanna to get to my app list. I can't really get to it. I guess I could add a widget that showed my app list on this screen too, but now I've got app list here and here. So now I have to move the browser over to get to my apps and I'm switching things around. So there's a few things there that I think keep it from being totally viable to me but maybe you're different maybe this looks really cool to you so guys there you go really strange launcher a lot of interesting stuff a lot of really good ideas and it works seemingly relatively well on surface duo guys thanks for watching i will see you on the next one and until next time stay nerdy my friends